Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls and friends beyond the binary. It's time for the podcaster. That sounded that tone sounded familiar, like, uh, but but I'm the podcaster that barely remembers uh, patrons. I think that's like a, a call for a train or something, a train to slumber town. Because it's time for sleep with me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. And if you are a regular listener, uh, it's a huge help if you could just pay attention for a few minutes. These are the ways we keep the show going. And then when your hand hits the fridge tomorrow. Sleepwithmepodcast.com slash sponsors. This keeps the podcast free for everybody. Thanks. Uh, hey, I don't know if you've gotten your Sleep With Me swag on and checked out our store over at sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Uh, we got some amazing shirts uh, and uh, Burning the Butterfly bag and two new amazing things from Emily Tat, a beautiful illustrator. Uh, there's an amazing sleepy sheet print you got to check out. And then and also a uh, couple different Sleepy Sheep shirts. Uh, and it's hard to say Sleepy Sheets or Sleepy Sheep. Uh, but, but uh, you know, I try. But uh, do yourself a favor. Get your swag on. Share it with me. Uh, and you can check out everything over at uh, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Thanks. Uh, hey, everybody. I want to do a little bit of a friendly competition here. Uh, you know, one huge way to help the show is to spread the word and ask people to actually subscribe in Apple Podcasts or whatever app, uh, Google Podcasts or whatever app they choose to subscribe in, uh, Spotify or whatever. And I wanted to just uh, like make a friendly competition. That's a huge way to support the show is just to let people know and say, hey, check out this podcast, subscribe to it. And right now, uh, Australia... Uh, Iceland, uh, Malta, and New Zealand are where the show is growing most. So thanks to everybody in Australia, New Zealand, Iceland, and Malta. Holy mackerel. And uh, I'd like to see, we'll do this for the rest of the summer. And then uh, as we did when Sweden took the title a couple of years ago, uh, I'll figure out something fun to do. So any other country in the world, you know, you start spreading the word wherever you are. And we'll see it reflected. Uh, and, you know, keep up the good work there, uh, Malta, Iceland, uh, Sweden, and New Zealand. Thank you. Uh, great way to help the show. And let's see how it goes. Thanks, everybody. Uh, hey, I wanted to thank an- yet another Paul who supported Robin Hood. Went to sleep.robinhood.com, signed up for a free uh, Robin Hood account, got a free sack. Uh, amazing uh, sponsor. Really, really makes it easy to do these commission-free trades, uh, learning about investing. Sleep.robinhood.com. Sign up there. Get your free stock. Thanks, Paul. Oh, Mystery Bard, who, who works so hard on this show? Mr. Bard, I'm at Dearest Scooter on Twitter and Instagram. Twinster, still pending. My application there is still pending. And don't forget, you can listen in your smart speakers. You can even tell your iPhone, hey, iPhone name, uh, subscribe to Sleep With Me podcast. Or uh, any of your smart speakers, you just say, hey, play Sleep With Me podcast. And you say, smart speaker, set a sleep timer for uh, 55 minutes, 90 minutes, it's eight hours. Uh, thanks, and uh, what do you say we get on with the show? Uh, hey, are you up all night tossing, turning, mind racing, trouble getting to sleep, trouble staying asleep? Well, welcome. It's 
Bedtime for Sleep With Me, the podcast that puts you to sleep. We do it the bedtime story. All you need to do is get in bed, turn out the lights, and press play. I'm going to do the rest. What I'm going to attempt to do is create a safe place where you could set aside whatever's keeping you awake, whether it's a thoughts, a feelings, a physical sensations, so stuff you're feeling physically, uh, experiencing emotionally or, you know, contemplating or, you know, in my case, ruminating uh, heavy on the, the room, which you do like, uh, I think just because that sounds like something you say, well, I prefer like with, with not R-O-O-M, obviously. Uh, anyway, what I'm going to do, uh, oh, whatever's keeping you awake, I'd like to take your mind off of that. Uh, it could be any anything, you know. I'm going to here to keep you company to distract you as you drift off into sleep. The uh, way I'm going to do it is, uh, you know, I got this nice, safe place, uh, plenty of room, shows plenty of time. You got a long, long uh, landing strip here, descent. Uh, and uh, what, I, what, oh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to send my voice across the deep, dark night. I'm going to use lulling, soothing, creaky dulcet tones, pointless meanders, superfluous tangents i'm gonna take my time you know bear you know i'm gonna get there's a warm-up and a cool down combined into one one layer you know parallel layers you say well there's a warm-up layer in the podcast a cool down layer all the way through uh so yeah i mean basically the reason i make the show is because i've been there uh in a lot of the cases and you know i might not know exactly what you're dealing with but I do know how it feels uh, when you can't fall asleep and you got to get up or you wake up. Uh, work over this morning, woke up, I had an early alarm for a weekend. I'm recording this on a Saturday. And then I woke up a half hour before that and I said, what the heck? Uh, I said, a rip off to myself. Uh, so I know what it's like, uh, whatever your case may be, I'm here to help. Uh, now, if you're new couple of things to know, well, right up front, kind of up front. Structurally, show starts off with business. That's how we keep the show free for everybody. And thank you, everybody that participates in that. Uh, then there's an intro. The intros are about 12 to 15 minutes or so. And it's kind of a, a big part of the podcast. Uh, but there's no, like, after you start listening regularly, there's no wrong way, even initially, uh, you just want to make it the easiest way if you're if you're really new. But like if some listeners uh, skip the intro, like maybe two three uh, percent. Some listeners fall asleep during the intro. A lot of listeners use it as kind of their wind down as they're cool down. They're cooling, they're cooling down and warming up their bed at the same time. You know, to to, to, to uh, descend into sleep. So the intros are a little bit different than a normal podcast intro, where it'd be like, yeah, yeah, I'm a ham, I'm, I'm a hammy pod cool coming at you and here's the show like uh, i do that part then i do a setup for the show that's it's a part of the show and the podcast does not work for everybody but for almost uh i'd say like 95 percent of people that it does work for uh, which is a pretty good amount of people uh they say it took through two or three tries so if you want uh if you're up for it give it two or three tries because i'm just here to help you fall asleep now, if you've given it two or three tries and you say, well, this isn't for me, but I'm still looking to, for a way to fall asleep, or you're already saying this is definitely like Scoots, you know, uh, not sure you and I are cut from the same, you know, cloth. Uh, and I w- want to say that to you more intensely, go to sleepwithmepodcast.com slash no thank you. Uh, there's resources there, uh, for other things, there's some things that I listen to in other sleep podcasts. And then there's also some options. If you say, well, you scoots, I got to tell you how I feel. Uh, there, there's, uh, the options in there. Uh, so that's, if you do, you know, give it a few tries though, cause I, I really, I just want to help you fall asleep. I believe you deserve a good night's sleep. I believe you deserve a life where you can flourish. And so you feel you're rested and you can do that. And, uh, you, uh, of course, you deserve to be treated with dignity and respect. Uh, now, a couple other things. This is one podcast you don't need to listen to. You probably you may have figured that out already. Uh, you can kind of listen. You can totally listen uh, either way or whatever in between. You know, t- turn it down to a murmur. 
or listen to my every word. Uh, the reason I make the show is so you don't need to listen. But if you do need to, if you need company in the deep, dark night, I'm here to the very end to, to, to keep you company. And that's kind of how the podcast works. Somehow by me keeping you company, no strings attached, uh, you could fall asleep. Uh, or if you don't, I'm here because, uh, like I said, I've been there. Uh, so no pressure to listen. Oh, I guess that kind of says no pressure to fall asleep either. That's why the shows are an hour. That's why you can listen back to back to back to back. And, uh, yeah, that's why the podcast is free. So you say, well, okay, well, yeah, this puts you. And I say, well, okay, I don't understand this. Uh, that's what most people's reaction is the first two or three tries. What is this? What the heck? Who in the what's it? Is he still talking about what's it? Is he talking about how's it's now? Now is he transitioning to use the end of that word because he started to think about sea breeze and astringing? Is he going to go back to that joke where he used a, like whatever the thing we call the Latin, the Latin verbiage uh, uh, to, uh, yes, I am, a strange, a strang, what's a strang, a stringe, a stringe, a strange, a strung, a stress, oh, maybe it's east orum east, east os east. That would be a stress, which I think is strange, so a strange, a strang, a strung. It would, like uh, that would be like in a in some sort of home with uh, in a 1980s home where skincare came first. You say, well, this I don't know if you're going to live under my roof. Uh, it's uh, skincare first. You know, that's a home I I've never lived in. Like I mean, w- w- like it, where it's a first. You say, I mean, it might be a good thing, but I'm just going to talk about goofy parts about. Skin. You say, uh, so, you know, before you eat your dinner, don't worry, Papa. I've astrunged. I've estranged, I estranged, I estranged, and I estranged. You say, okay, okay, sweetie pie. Okay, Junior, great work on the estranging. Oh, astringent, you might not know what I'm talking about. You bar- I barely do. It may not be relevant. Uh, I think it is, though. Like, so there's this thing called astringent, right? Maybe, I don't think I've ever purchased witch hazel. And I say, okay, that's probably, like, needs to be renamed. Though I'm pretty sure it's the exact name of a pet, pet but uh, uh, it, now just me. Now, see, see, this is where I go off topic. Now I'm imagining being at a party, like a dance, uh, when we we're in, at peak Hazel, with the name Hazel was at its peak, and you're at a school dance, and you say, "Wait, wait a second, you you like witch Hazel?" And then everyone would like, like that's true though. If you were at a dance, and your best friend. You say you kissed witch hazel, uh, it, like like you'd be, or which of the hazels did you kiss? I guess would be another way, but that's pretty formal uh, to say to your best friend. I guess you'd like uh, you don't know how you'd uh, what, hazel who you could say that's pretty funny without even a witch hazel joke. You'd say hazel who, hazel who was that in one of the Seuss books? Hey, was Hazel one of the who's? I, I think that would like, uh, well, I don't know if we ever had peak Seuss, but a, like original Seussage, like, uh, maybe Hazel, I, I know someone may be listening and then maybe like, uh, when you wake up tomorrow and you say, well, let me, when, it, when was, when was Hazel popular? I believe my eyes are Hazel. I never made that association with witch Hazel any, but I was trying to explain the fact that astringent is this thing you take a like a and I, here's the thing and I'm perfectly honest I don't think I've astringed my skin since the last time I joked about this on the podcast I mean I, I, it's a winner here when I'm recording this so, so it's like I'm not uh, using multiple layers of sunscreen multiple times a day just you know one morning moisturizer but uh, astringing is like when you take this thing. I think it's mostly like alcohol or witch hazel, which I don't know if that's suspended in alcohol. And then you, and usually it has a nice blue tint, the sea breeze. That's why I like sea breeze, sea breeze and sleep with me. Two things you'd never associate with one another that go great together. It's like fresh breeze, sea breeze and sleep, sea, sea breeze, sleep with me edition. Now in purple. That's sea breeze folks. Actually, no offense. I usually get the uh, store brand. Because, you know, you know, they really upcharge for that sea breeze, you know, that's extra breeze. Sea breeze, formally sponsor of Sleep With Me. Now, we're not speaking. 
Okay, where was I? Oh, so then you take that, you put it in a cotton pad or a cotton ball, and you wipe your face with it, and I think it degreases. We talked about this a long time ago. Degreases or deglazes your face. It, I don't know what deglaze. Like I've never gotten to like what deglazing really is. I've seen it on shows, and I'm pretty sure I've done it before. Um, deglazing, uh, Hazel de Glazel. That's another character. That was another. That was one of the great lost Seuss books. Hazel de Glazel. She was the wisest to snoofle, snoofle, from Snoof, Snoof Town, Hazel de Lazel. It might be a, I, I, it might be a new code name for me. Did Scoots change his name to Hazel de Lazel? And no one in the world, even the greatest experts in words, and even with the, Helen's help uh, from the illusionist, he, he, could, he couldn't even figure out how to spell de Lazel without making a laser in there, because then he would never be able to say his name without getting even further distracted. So it's basically something you use to clean your face. And I guess, that, so that took me so off the topic uh, that we don't really get to spend any more time with this wonderful family we just met, uh, whose top priority is skincare. Good question, though. I can hear you asking it. No, no one in that family is a dermatologist. They just have, uh, like, their priorities. So they say, could be skin care, uh, uh, you know, do, doing good for others, kindness. And maybe it's like an accidental generational association. But in this case, it's a good one. They say, well, when my, when my skin feels good, I feel good, I do good. Well, you say, what belief system, sleep with me, a, sleep, a belief system formed around sleep with me. In 2022, you know, after Scooter changed his name and, you know, moved to Snoofville, formed Snoofville. And what was the, what was the belief system based around sleep with me? Was it like uh, some sort of sleeping, you know, uh, no, it's based around skin care and kindness. Uh, that all kindness comes w with kindness to your skin. Largest, you know, largest organ on your body and in it, but probably, though some say the tongue, but I don't know if that's true. In my case, it's just, yeah, you're right. It's whatever organ produces hot air. Thanks, brain. So anyway, if you're new, that was a good example of how the show will go from here on out. I'll talk about one thing, then I'll see something over there. Then I'll be sitting down at a dinner table with a family who's, you know, who's got the priorities in order. We can't say anything else about that. And, you know, then I'll take a trip to Snoof, Snoof Town or whatever. Uh, and the, all this meandering is so if you need me here, I'm here to talk to you. But if you don't need me, you just need me nearby. You could just drift off in any of those turns. Uh, I think that's it tonight. We'll, after we, the intro, I think I started going off topic when I was explaining the structure of the show. But after the intro, we'll have some business. Then we'll talk about Game of Thrones. Uh, then we'll talk about some stuff that came up on Game of Thrones. Then we'll have a visit from Tom and Pounce. Then we'll have prayers to the old gods and the new. And then we'll have the thank yous and the good nights. So really long episode. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. I'm, I'm really here to uh, help to take your mind off stuff and keep you company. I appreciate you checking the show out. Uh, I appreciate your time. And I strive, I yearn, and I work very hard because I want to help you fall asleep. Uh, so thanks again, and thanks, because uh, here's a couple of ways we keep the show uh, going. Uh, hey, everybody. I don't know if you uh, checked out our new uh, merch store. It says sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. But we just added an amazing art print uh, to the shirts and the Bernie the Butterfly uh, tote bag. So get over there, sleepwithmepodcast.com slash store. Uh, get some swag on. And, you know, let me know where in the world you're wearing it and uh, or carrying Bernie or putting your print up. Uh, yeah, check it out, sleepinbypodcast.com slash store. Thanks. All right, everybody. Welcome back. Uh, season 8, Episode 2. Uh, a night for all, a night for all seasons, I wanted to say. A night of the seven kingdoms. A slight pun, I believe. Uh, maybe even unintentional. I don't think they do anything unintentional. Maybe a, I'd recall more of a low level pun or say, well, we didn't, we just wanted to call it that. We, you know, the pun was uh, an inconvenient pun.
that was actually like a, the, the Al Gore was trying to do like a like his own satire of Al Gore, and he did a book uh, called An Inconvenient Pun. In, in, in any case, because just because it is, uh, but it, like, um, okay, let's where do we start here though? So the episode starts with about the same opening. Maybe last hearth gets shown faster. They did notice a lot more details. The trees popping up around Winterfell was cool. There's a body of water around King's Landing. I, I grabbed a bunch of King's Landing maps we can look at later, but I still think I was unable to identify, you know, not the bay. Uh, here we go, actually. It's a... Uh, Maybe I missed it. Maybe I'll rewind because right now it's at the King's Landing part of the opening. Here we go. Zooming in. Yeah, there's a, well, maybe it's just a reservoir. Unless there's a bay, it's an inland bay. I don't think so, though. There's like, a, there's just a body of water there, like uh, other than the bay. But then again, I don't know if on the, 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 the opening there's all the water. So anyway, I may be confused. I mean, that would be nothing new. Uh, but I did want to say right up front, this is my fourth time through the episode. And so I know, like, I think, like, uh, sure, we, we would have wanted, uh, like, it to be a nonstop episode. But I think this is a very necessary episode. And, it, like, a part of the, the season, you know, part of the closure and a part of, uh, it, 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 like, so I can, I can feel people saying, you know, and I think it's also a part of being able to binge so much television. Uh, that may have made it more difficult saying, well, uh, usually, but I mean, think about how nice they are to say, well, no, now it's time to go to bed. Like the episode's over, go to bed, come back next week. I do appreciate that very much. And I appreciate having to wait, uh, because it builds up the anticipation. And then that all the next four episodes are supersized. So, and there's a lot to like, uh, especially, I mean, uh, really getting getting a lot of brand this season, which is in, it could have been it, it could have gone for an hour and a half version of this episode, to be honest. Uh, just because there was, you know, a couple of conversations that uh, I would have just liked to sit in on. Okay, wait, let's see. Jamie opens with Jamie kind of has a dull or serious look on his face. Uh, in the opening lines, the the fifty percent of the opening line, I said, "This is good for me." Because the Khaleesi says, when I was a child, my brother would tell me a bedtime story. And then that was it. I said, okay, well, that doesn't work on sleep with me, Khaleesi. But she's talking to Jamie. She says, where's your army now? Uh, there's a lot of, she, she lied to me as well. Uh, everybody says that. Uh, it's 20,000 Ivy Leaguers in the Golden Company. Not all guaranteed Ivy Leaguers, though, just like the elephants weren't guaranteed. Uh, usage of we, Khaleesi says, what? What do you mean, we? Tyrion kind of gets shut down. Uh, Sansa says, no, I don't trust him either. Uh, then I really liked uh, how grounded the scene was in some sense. And like, as James says, well, I'm not going to apologize, but he doesn't say it with an arrogance. Uh, he just says it with the truth. Uh, says, geez, I did this for my family, uh, uh, for my house and my family, I think he says first. Uh, and you think about, remember Tywin, man, holy moly. And then Bran says, the things we do for love, uh, that shuts Jamie down. Uh, that goes beyond loyalty. This goes beyond loyalty. And he looks to Brienne on that uh, comment. Uh, and then a little time goes by, but then Brian stands for Jamie, says he's a man of honor, which I'm pretty sure there was an episode called Man Without Honor. And then I talked about that song, Men Without Ties Don't Dress for Dinner by Paul Westerberg. Uh, but maybe, maybe you didn't, didn't hear that, but that's a song, Men Without Ties Don't Dress for Dinner. It's a Friday night frozen pizza thing. Uh, something, something, something. Uh... So that's a, that's a song, and that that was an episode. Also, there's lots of wood by the fireplace, which makes sense. Uh, I don't know if this is the same room. This is a question I don't know the answer to. If this is the same room they're in later, I did get to kind of look up some uh, stuff about the layer layout of Winterfell. Sansa says, "So, Brian, you vouch for Jamie?" 
and then Khaleesi kind of gets overruled or over uh, because she, then Sansa says, "Okay, I try, if you trust him, I trust you." And Khaleesi gives Sansa what? Look, uh, water for the north. Uh, what does that mean? Water for the north. You look like you're thinking with Imram. Or can you get a... Oh, Khaleesi gives a chance look. She goes, Warden the North, what are you doing? You're thinking about something else. He goes, yeah, I was thinking about uh, Egon, Egon, Egon. Uh, he goes, well, we could use every person we could get. Uh, so then Khaleesi says, fine. Grey Worm has a long face off with uh, Jamie. Kind of gives him a stare as he hands over his stuff. And then... Uh, the queen stands, so then everybody stands, kind of like this meeting's over. But then it was so awkward. Uh, everybody goes off, tries to get, like, doesn't want to talk to the Khaleesi. And I said, holy high school. Uh, queen stands, we all stand, but let's all awkwardly leave. Uh, Varys, it was so awkward, Varys put his hands in his pockets, uh, or in his shirt, or whatever. Uh, and Bran just sits and stares at Jamie, which was great. I mean, it really, it's like hard acting, like, uh, cause he's not, he's not staring at this point. I don't know. He's like sit staring in this like Zen like way. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. It's real, like, uh, I know a lot of people are probably talking about how great Bran is this season, but, uh, I, could, I literally can't get enough, especially after the last episode and then this one. But of course you say, Scooch, you, uh, there's only four episodes left. So I say, okay, give me 30, I mean, 30% brand. I mean, it doesn't matter because I'm working on my own show. Oh, so three had Raven. Um, let's see. I'll find, hey, Khaleesi kind of gives it to you and she says, geez, I'm going to find another hand if I need to. Jorah and Varys are there. They're like awkward. Uh, and Tyrion says, one of you two might be in charge soon. And we see a forge, and it's hot stuff. Gendry's working hard. He's just steaming that dragon glass. He's showing off some neck. A little, pe- you know. I said, "Holy cow!" He's sweating. He he has a, like he's in a he looks like a bale ask. I put uh, or a little. He's got a little bale thing going. It's in Christian bale. And they do some nothing like flirting over obsidian. If you've never, if you've never. <laughs> flirted on a bed of obsidian well you may have because you who knows what the geology underwear you, you know many people may have flirted on a bed of obsidian obsidian above it or on a crust of obsidian also obsidian crust uh, that's a new thing i'm working on or title or something uh gendry does, doesn't you know again he doesn't realize how tough aria is uh she wants the deets uh, and she wants very specific in uh florid vocabulary and he gendry doesn't cut it uh his is different yo this is different i think that's what he says or he says let me show you some tricks i've learned uh from many she says something about many oh many faces uh and then she goes where's my i think i put this is this she goes yo where's my weapon fool uh, look, oh no, that sort of look. She she gives him this great look. She goes, you keep on, get my weapon going. And she walks off with this cool look. I thought she said, where's my weapon, fool? But it's cool look uh, by Arya. And then we have one of the scenes they wish was an hour long. Bran sitting by the tree and Jamie rolls up. I said, man, did his beard get more, could a beard get more handsome in four, say, like four minutes? As they said, look out, Captain America, like uh, Captain Westeros just showed, Captain, Captain, whatever, I'm just like, uh, what does it say, beard, all bards, uh, question mark, question mark, uh, I don't know what that means, uh, brand two, oh, let me, let me, let me turn on some close captioning here to see, right now, uh, Jamie's got like some leather armor on, uh, Sorry, you won't. Sorry, then. Let me see what they're talking about. Yo, he says, sorry. He goes, you weren't sorry then. And But Brand says, you know, this is a, the like we were on a journey called life, man, and uh, we've, we've changed. And he goes, by the way, I'm not Brand hysteric anyway. Jamie goes, what? Uh, 
Give him something else now. And Jim goes, you're not angry at me? He goes, no, I'm not angry at anyone. Really, this is a great scene. And uh, he's a little bit more expressive, but not very expressive facially. But his voice says everything you need to know. Jamie says, what about afterwards? And he says, how do you know there is an afterwards? And I said, holy cow, keep me in mindfulness city. Not angry anymore. Then we have Tyrion walking in the castle. Lots of preparations going on. Uh, Jamie and uh, they go, well, here, Jamie rolls up. Well, here we are again. And they say, yep, together again. Uh, somebody spits. Uh, they say, how, what do you think of our co- new queen? And uh, they say, well, I underestimated Cersei. By the way, is that baby for real? So they say, yeah. Jamie says, yep. And Jamie says, she was always good at using the truth to tell lies. Uh, and they talk about being fooled. And then Tyrion goes, well, you were never fooled by her, though. Uh, you loved her. You knew who she was, and you loved her anyway. And there's a really great Jamie look there. Uh, I think, let me see. It's hard to blame her. I'm watching it. Underestimated, Tyrion says. That's where we are. Uh, babies for reals. I believed her. And uh, Jamie's got some nice rubies on the hilt of his sword. No, that's real. Okay. So it's been good telling the truth. Uh, it wouldn't be too hard on yourself. Uh, she fooled me. That's what Jamie says. Tyrion truth tells him right out of that. Yeah, he said, that's when he says it. So I'm just trying to see. He loved her anyway. Oh, yeah, that's his good look. He's speechless. Uh, then they go up on ramparts or whatever. Uh, they say, this is a whole full circle thing. Huh? We're here at Winterfell just like when we started it. Uh, and then Tyrion starts to make a speech. Uh, and uh, Jamie walks off to look at Brienne training. Uh, they exchange a uh, look. And then we see Podrick's making Mama proud. Uh, and he says, Sir Jamie, Lady Brienne. And Brienne's going to be in charge of the left flank of, uh, you know, the plan. And she says, why are you being so nice, man? It's throwing me off. Uh, and he says, I'd like to serve under your command. Uh, they put Jamie Lannister, Cersei, starting at five. I have no idea what that means. Uh, what does that mean? Jamie Lannister, Cersei staring at fire. Oh, no, that's Khaleesi. Khaleesi staring at the fire. Sorry, Khaleesi. And Jorah comes in and goes, forgive me, Khaleesi. And she says, what? You know, she says, what'd you do? And he goes, no, no, no. He goes, says, for interrupting, you're watching the fire. He goes, by the way, I was jealous of Tyrion, but you were right. He's smart. Forgive him. I think it was one other suggestion, and I don't know if this was like the lead into the next scene or a mystery, but after watching it a few times, they said, I think it's just a lead into the next scene. He goes, one other suggestion, and then it goes to Lord Breastplate's meeting with Sansa. They're talking. Uh, Sansa, like, was rocking a cool. Uh, she, I said, she looks like uh, David, David Bowie in a musical about Circe, uh, but... Uh, you know, that's the only thing we can do, dream about. Uh, and they go, let's talk around things for a little while. Fra- family are complicated. <laughs> this was, uh, she goes, our, uh, Sansa says that. And uh, Khaleesi says, I certainly have been. And I put, oh, girl, like, you don't even know yet. Uh, and Khaleesi hands out some compliments. And then she goes, what's up with your brother? And he goes, he, she says, oh, he loves you. She goes, oh, well, I love him. You know, I changed my goals uh, because until I met Jon Snow. Khaleesi has a nice usage of who and whom. Uh, and then they kind of go back and forth. Uh, they make fun of Jon's height. Uh, she says, I've, he's the only person that's been true to me, other that true to his word, other than someone else. Uh, and he said, well, who is that, Jorah or uh, Khal Drogo or somebody else, uh, like some secret person? Uh, let's see. 
Because I said, what about, like, uh, there's other people. And I said, okay, well. And then she says, what about the North, yo? She goes, what about the North? Uh, she goes, uh, it's, uh, you know, we're not, you know, if you're on the Iron Throne, we want the North to be free. And Khaleesi just takes her hand back there, holding hands during the complimenting phase. Uh, she goes, I don't know if I like that tone, more or less. So then that maester shows up, like, uh, the newer maester, you know, he's only been around for three seasons, so I haven't learned his name. And uh, he says, by the way, big moment. You know, you remember I said I interrupt you if any uh, anybody, any Greyjoys show up uh, or if I sense awkwardness. If Theon's here, Theon bends the knee right away. He says, she says, why, why are you with her if you'll have me? I think it's a, I just thought Khaleesi was like, what are you, why aren't you with your sister, more or less? Is your sister okay? Yes. Why aren't you with her? Well, Queen Sansa, or Lady Sansa, if you'll have me, I'll defend the North. I may have teared up here. There was, a, oh no, Bri I teared up with Brienne. I may have teared up twice this episode. Maybe this was it. Because they do have a pretty legit hug. Uh, then this one didn't seem, and this seemed like the Onion Knight, but now maybe not the best use of the Onion Knight's time. He's serving soup. Uh, it, he, you know, he hands out soup and the truth and wisdom at the same time. So he's uh, doling out suits, uh, soup to some new recruits. Uh, they forgot to get their bread. They only got their soup. Uh, and I said, dudes, like, you're going to need that bread, uh, like, uh, especially. So then we see Gilly for the first time, I think, uh, at least for the first time I saw Gilly. And I said, if Gilly, I'm pretty sure Gilly and the Onion Knight have worked together. Uh, but there's this nice moment with this young, younger, uh, young, young, young woman. And I thought it was like kind of a nice callback to Shireen, uh, for, for, for the Onion Knight and him and Gilly kind of work as a team uh, to win her trust. Uh, but there is a lot in this episode, a small, like D or C level, uh, D or E level thread of like, I know it's better for you, for everybody. And Gilly and the Onion Knight kind of go counter to that. They say, well, what do you want to do? And so there's a lot of times everybody's, like, Arya gets told by uh, the Forge Master. I forgot his name. So, you know, it kind of goes through this episode. But, uh, oh, speaking of which, this next scene, Happy. Oh, no, this is a return. You hear a horn. Uh, did something get interrupted? Oh, yeah, let's see. Serving soup, Onion Knight work uh but then we have one horn it's the return of uh ed is his name dolores ed or something ed dolores uh ian torman and uh barrick dondarian and they say they all get big hugs except for barrick gives john a handshake and they say what up and they say kid umber <laughs> well was uh, not anymore uh they say everybody's working for the uh the night king now and they say, so what time? They say, before the sun comes up tomorrow. Torment says, is a big woman here? Then we have more preps, more planning. They say, Just, there's too many people to deal with. Uh, so we'll just deal with the Night King. That kind of goes through that plan. There's a nice map. Uh, it did take me a few rewatches to see uh, that they kind of like, they have almost like these Scrabble type tiles to represent the. Uh, the, you know, whatever they want to call it, the Northern Army, Night Army, or whatever. Uh, uh, let's see. He'll never. Yes, he will. O'Brien says, well, uh, what if I uh, try to catch the Night King? He wants this red raven. I'm a human history machine. And they talk about forgetting or being forgotten and how that has to do with being human memories. Uh, not oh, then Sam says memories, but not from books. That's you, Bran. Bran says his mark is on me. I'll meet him at the God's Wood with Theon, because Theon needs redemption. For you know, Theon says I'm Iron Born. In this one, I guess it was a little bit of a stretch. I mean, Theon. I mean, you kind of see this one like it's a little bit, but I mean, it could be a misdirect. But uh, you see, Theon thus far, you you've uh, you know. You're great. I, I mean, I love the, the end, but uh, you say, historically, when we put responsibility in your hands, 
So I guess this would be his full shot of redemption to say, see, this time I didn't mess it up. Uh, he said, I did rescue my sister. So this is the super Theon we're talking about. Uh, he says Ironborn. I didn't know if the, the Ironborn have some resistance or something. Uh, uh, Davos is in charge of lighting the moat with Tyrion, but they say, you, you, Khaleesi says, I need your mind, man. And then they say, what about dragon fire? Uh, and and Brian says, no one's ever tried. I loved that. Thorman says, at least we're all together. Somebody says, let's get some rest. I, at first I thought it was John, but then I was like, was that Davos? Uh, then there's awkward again. Everybody leaves awkwardly. John avoids the Khaleesi. Khaleesi's out. Uh, just leaves us again with a scene I could watch for an hour plus of Bran and uh, Tyrion alone. And he goes, you need some help? And Bran goes, nope. Uh, and Tyrion goes, you've had a strange journey. He goes, stranger than most. Uh, this is really the kind of, uh, uh, yeah, I love this. And they say, you know, he goes, well, what happened? He goes, long story. And this was just the way the editing worked out. It was not so great because he goes, well, I got all, don't we have all night? Uh, or I thought that's what Tyrion pulled up a chair and said, tell me, man, we got all night. Uh, uh, what does this say? Ms. Morrow dismissed. Oh, uh, Ms. Sunday gets dissed by ignorant northerners. Ray Worm says, does north is, he goes, I'll work here for, you know, a stretch. But other than that, we got to get out of here. Where should we go? She says, North, baby. The beach is in North. Uh, and he goes, we'll be your, I'll be your protector. Like that song, Protector's Coming Home or whatever. This looks like I put cumin boar. That's what it looks like my handwriting says. Uh, a cumin boar wolf, uh, question mark. Uh, maybe cinnamon bacon. I don't know what that says. Uh, but then Sam and John, human boar wolf. Uh, 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 but Sam says to John, did you tell her? He goes, no. Waiting for the perfect time? Yeah. Then Ed rolls up. He says, what up, my boys? Uh, and then he says, and now our watch begins, which I thought was a cool line. I don't think it, maybe it just didn't have enough breathing space uh, for it to be at its coolest. I don't know. Yeah, but I think that was a necessary one, just a cool. And then, let's see. Oh, they say, Sam, why don't you take a break and avoid all the action? He goes, I'm tough, man. I dealt with thins, uh, walkers. Uh, you need me. And uh, then they go through the, like, they go through a quick, you know, uh, circular of their journey, uh, talking about all their friends and the whole night's watch, and then say, just, just us three. And then we have uh, Tyrion and Jamie. Now, Jamie's now in his full armor. So is Tyrion. Uh, and they're just hanging uh, by a fireplace, uh, drinking wine. He goes, remember, when we, again, they got a, like a little bit more. They say, geez, remember when we first were here? You were a golden lion. And he goes, you were a sleaze. It was all so simple. And he goes, do you miss it? Uh, and Tyrion says, of course. Uh, to the perils of self-betterment. Uh, and Brienne uh, and uh, Pod come in, and they say, my lady. And she goes, well, I'm looking for someplace warm, uh, which made me think of the rooms in Winterfell. Um, and Brienne's great, because they say, well, how about some wine? She goes, no, we got to get to sleep. Uh, and Pod goes, come on. And she goes, a half a cup for Pod. And then we got to go to bed. And they say, join us. She goes, just for a bit. Uh, then Davos comes in to get warm and torment. Uh, and this was like, uh, I'm sure on the internet, I can't even imagine. Uh, this was really like uh, falling asleep. He, they, he goes, this is our last night in the world. And uh, he goes, he literally says, uh, they say, so uh, he goes, uh, they go, you want a drink? He goes, I got my own bone, you know, whatever, a uh, horn drink here. And I think first he has a little bit of a, like he kind of gives, Jamie, he goes, calls Jamie by the wrong name, but that wasn't on purpose. And then he goes, he goes, he goes, you might not know what this means. It goes, but buckle your seatbelts, everybody. He goes, if this weren't like a specific, like spectacularly, he goes, I'm about to tell you the weirdest thing you'll ever hear in eight seasons. And they go, do the three eye Raven know about this? He goes, I assume so. 
And he goes, do you want to be weirded out forever in a like, uh, like a totally strange way? And he tells the story from when he was 10 in, uh, that he was uh, a giant baby uh, for three months when he was 10. And then he drinks what I presume is giant's milk out of a horn. And it was literally like, like I, I literally said WTF. Uh, I mean, it was cool and torment's the best, but uh, it, was, it was just so out there. I mean, I can only, I mean, hopefully they'll release the, the uh, shooting of that scene because everyone had a straight face, but I can't imagine, uh, I, I have to imagine it was like uh, that everyone was laughing. Uh, then the hounds uh, lying around solo. Arya rolls up and they're all quiet. They share a drink. I notice the hound won't look at her. He's kind of staring off. Uh, and she goes, what are you doing up here? And she goes, you don't fight for anybody. And he goes, I fought for you once. Uh, and because she doesn't, nobody knows about everybody else's journey and there's not, I us enough time to fill everybody in, but I think he kind of said enough anyway. Then Beric Dondarrion shows up, uh, this we learn, I mean, so that moment you say, huh, well, what does this mean for Arya and the Hound? And then we learn that Beric Dondarrion, you can get off Arya's list and he's like an opportune uh, converter because he says, hey, you think this would be a good time to talk about the Lord of Light and all the Lord of Light's done for us? Uh, and the Hound goes, no sermons, bruh. And he goes, you got me, Hound. Let's have a drink together. And Arya's like, this is, I'm out of here. Kind of was like a, like a party after a wedding, after a wedding reception, like uh, the after the wedding reception party, like at a hotel or something. Uh, and like, you're kind of wandering around from group to group, uh, and you're like, okay, this one, like you got the one, like the Tormen room and then you have the hound and barrack and you say, okay. Then Arya kind of shoots, uh, oh, she shoots arrows and Gendry's kind of watching, uh, and then he says, I got your staff, uh, and, uh, you know, they said, no need to insert puns here. Arya quizzes Jen, 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 what's his name, Gantry? Gendry. He, he tells her that he's Robert's son. And uh, then they have a moment. And, uh, well, first, Arya slowly takes off her gloves early. Uh, doesn't keep count, he says. Makes her, Arya makes her move. Uh, lots of knots to untie. And then Find. The charts? What does that say? Strange we are together. Find chance. I don't know. Strange we're together. Oh, fireside chat. Back to the fireside chat. That's what that says. Strange we're all together. Uh, defending Winterfell with honor. Uh, that we've all not, you know, we've all gone against them. Uh, and then Tyrion, he says, I get a good feeling about this. Uh, we're in good shape, I think. Uh, everybody laughs at that. And Tyrion even does a brief lineup. He goes, uh, we got Sir Davos, we got Jaime Lannister, Brienne of Tarth. Uh, and then Tormund goes, WTF, she's on a knight? What the heck? And Jaime says, I can fix that. Uh, and uh, Tormund says, I'd knight you ten times over. And Brienne's not sure first, but there's a look from Patrick that says he knows the truth of what Brienne really wants. Uh, Jamie says, Neil, it's this really big emotional moment. I mean, for the whole, uh, since we've met Brienne of Tarth, and kind of thematically, I think, really important. Uh, and what does that say? Start the short. Uh, be brave, be just, defend the innocent. Uh, and he goes, and now you're a knight of the seven kingdoms, uh, Sir Brienne of Tarth. Uh, Tormund's a great cat cl clapper. Her, everybody's cheering. Uh, she smi She has this wonderful smile. I mean, they just captured things. Holy cow. Uh, and yeah, there's an emotional, emotional resonance for me, at least. Uh, yeah, let's see. She smiles for real. Jorah. Oh, then we have Jorah meeting with uh, um, his, his uh, cousin from Bear Island. 
I think her name's Liana or something, Le- Le- Liana. And also in the background, there's some little finger shields, uh, some mockingbird shields. I mean, I guess those are from River River Run. And uh, she goes, uh, you know, I'm more, I'm, I'm, I'm defending things too. You can't tell me what to do. And she goes, see you, cousin. And then Sam gives heart Spain to uh, uh, Sir Jorah because he says, one, I can't hold it up. And two, John has your dad's sword. So now you have my dad's sword. Also, and then Jorah says, well, it's funny. John's related. Wait, is it John related to your mentor? And he goes, kind of. Amon and Aegon, too. They would make a great team. And he says, uh, Sir Jorah says, to guard the realms of men. So I do like that a lot of phraseology or whatever you want to call it does get brought up. Uh, now our watch begins uh, to guard the realm. Like, I mean, I don't know. I thought it was cool. Yes, yeah, so he says, see you, Jorah. And Jorah kind of has a look like maybe, maybe not. Uh, then we're back to the fireside chat. They're out of wine. Everybody wants to go to bed, but Tyrion wants to keep rocking it. You know how this is. Uh, they want to, he wants to party to celebrate Sir Brienne. And they say, anybody sing? Then Podrick sings beautifully. Uh, oh, I didn't look up the poem, so, but uh, Weiss and Benioff talked about it. Uh, uh, to the because la- they're like, this is the last night, you know, this is it. Uh, and, they, and then they do, as Brian, Podrick sings, the camera kind of uh, pans and then touches on everyone. Uh, so we kind of get a glimpse of uh, everyone in that room. Yeah, Theon and Sansa, Grey Worm and Masande share a big kiss. I don't know if, who else we see because I, I didn't write it down, but uh, yeah, then John's in the basement. <laughs> this was, I, I had to put some. Uh, Khaleesi finds John in the basement with his aunt. No, his other aunt. So his aunt finds him with his aunt. That's his mom. Uh, his aunt, that's his girlfriend, finds him with his aunt, that's his mother. mother. And you say, I thought the things with Tor. She goes, who's this? He goes, my aunt, mother. My, 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 uh. But, uh, Khaleesi wants to snuggle first, uh, before she finds out. Uh, she goes, who's that girl? Uh, that's what I put, because that reminded me of me at Madonna. And John tells her the truth as he knows it, uh, especially about her, her, uh, was it her brother or father? I guess her brother, right? Uh, Aegon, or what? Uh, I don't know. I get all the names mixed up. That's uh, John's name. Uh, he says they were in love. Uh, Rand told me, and Sam backed it up. Uh, she goes, "Your brother and your best friend told you this." And he goes, "My name, my name is Aegon." Uh, but you, he goes, "You could call me Egg or Aggie Poo." And he goes, "This is strange, my, You know, he goes, uh, "Even for me." But he says, I like to say, he says, it's true, Danny. And she goes, if it were, what does it say? Three hours marching sound French loads. Uh, she, they start to talk about what it means for the seven kingdoms and the Iron Throne. And then there's three horns. Uh, then there's marching sound effects. Uh, and I don't know what French loads means. It means something looks, uh, fierce looks. So, uh. Fierce looks from uh, Khaleesi and John. And then we have this ominous, ominous shot of Tyrion looking, and there's music, uh, and the camera pulls out, and we see the long-haired uh, northerners uh, on horses with no names. And that's how the episode comes to a close. Okay, so we're going to run through uh, some stuff that came out in the episode. One thing was uh, King's Landing. I Googled it. Uh, and it turns out, uh, King's Landing in New- you can go to King's Landing in New York State. Uh, it's at the corner of Maplewood Drive and Lake Ave in Rochester, New York. Um, and it's like, uh, like, uh, Rochester's first place where, uh, uh, people, uh, big farmers rest, uh, also the site of the first settlement and some of the river r- rivers, uh, port, uh, river port pioneers and, uh, and veterans live there, uh, yeah, or stay there now. And you might say, what river scoots? And I say, well, presumably in Niagara River, but I don't know. 
Maybe not. Maybe the Rochester River. I don't. I don't know the name of the river in Rochester. It looks nice though. Yeah, so it's a little bit. Then I wanted to. I was mainly trying to figure out what this body of water was outside of King's Landing. And I don't have, I have, so there'll be a lot of research linked to, to or just like basically like a, 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 so this is from a w o i a f uh, dot westeros dot org, a wiki of uh, ice and fire, and we'll just you can run through a couple of these notes on uh, on uh, King's Landing because they said, well, is there a lake there? Is it a reservoir? Or does anybody else thus far it doesn't appear like a lot of people care. Also, there's a lot of cool maps and art. Uh, so let's see. King's Landing is the capital of seven kingdoms on the Crownlands, uh, east coast of Westeros. So uh, black, oh, the mouth of the Blackwater Rush overlooks Blackwater Bay. But that doesn't uh, um, the site of the Iron Throne, Red Keep, uh, surrounded by a wall. Oh, here it is. I see it. Uh, I can, well, that looks like it's close to Heron Hall, though. We're in the movie. Well, maybe that was the thing. I'm looking at it. Uh, the Crownlands. Uh, maybe that's just the land around there. I do see something presumably south of Heron Hall uh, uh, that could uh, contain, uh, uh, that could, could be considered a, uh, a big lake. Uh, so maybe that was it. So... I guess, uh, let's see, notable locations, uh, yeah, Sept, uh, Alchemist, uh, Flea Bottom, uh, King's Landing, Streets and Squares. So this is a lot of stuff in here if you're interested. Uh, history, a lot of this is from the book, so, so you don't want to get too close, maybe. Anything about tourist, I mean, I'm going to guess I'm going to say, anything in here about tourist traps? No. Uh, so let's uh, search over here. Let's see this next link I download. I have access to. I'm waiting for it to download right now. So how is, how is everybody doing? Uh, just sitting here. Uh, you know, the internet and my, my uh, the climbing closets, you know, they don't even have internet in Westeros. So, so uh, but this is just a, like an, supposed to be another map here of uh, of something. Okay, so I have another map over here. Um, oh, this is just a city, though, so that doesn't do us any good. Uh, it kind of just shows the kind of four hill or three hills there. Uh, and uh, interesting, though, another good a good picture. Uh, here's a Game of Thrones dot fandom dot uh, com a wiki that a major wiki place. Uh, yeah, let's just see if we can find anything here. Seven the largest uh, history. We don't, you know, notable locations. Uh, oh, Littlefinger gets some credit here. The uh, Street of the Sisters, the Street of Flower, Street of Silk, Street of Steel, Street of Seeds. Uh, Five hundred thousand people po- possibly live there. But yeah, nothing. Not seeing this lake that I'm uh, interested in. And, then there's this awesome map at fantasticmaps.com. You know, I don't really have time to like uh, look around, like look too much at it because, uh, like, uh, but it's cool. Uh, it's like a drawn map by this person who runs the site, uh, John. So I just I linked to it because I really thought the art was cool. Um, uh, but again, no sign of that lake. Uh, but, uh, you know, I'm sure it exists, and maybe just, like, thinking it's closer to King's Landing than I thought. Another thing came up is, like, uh, about fireplaces, and I think this came up a while ago, um, is, like, uh, do they, like, really, like, how much, so this is from TexasFireframe.com, uh, and uh, it's, like, a, it looks like a site, but it says, do fireplaces really heat, uh, and you've heard the myth, maybe that they don't they don't heat. They send it out the chimney, and yet before central heating, m- millions of homes were heated by nothing, nothing but wood burning fireplaces. Uh, they've been used for, for war, warmth. Uh, so are they wasters of energy? Why the change of hearth? They say. Uh, Doctor Craneberg addresses the anti fireplace fallacy. Uh, 1.4 million years ago, uh, people domesticated to fire. 
an open fire on a domestic hearth has been the course source of human thermal comfort uh, that enabled the spread of civilization. He had, uh, starting in the mid seventies, the concept was challenged, uh, to, to today that people, Americans think that, uh, uh, fireplaces can't keep you warm. Wow. This is like flat earth, I guess. So, I mean, this is a fireplace sell, selling site though. How did the fireplace get a bad rap? Uh, well, it may have been finances, uh, conspiracies, uh, is the cost of heating stored, uh, a lot of uh, different other things, fireplace products. Uh, let's see, is they talk about their grates, which are good. A hot, efficient fire uh, will cause the thermostat to stay off if it's located near the fireplace. Other rooms will become cooler as a result, causing people to d- deduce the heat has been sucked out of these rooms, when in fact, uh, the heat was just turned off by the fireplace. Uh, Another factor to consider behind uh, air temperature is the radiant heat on the skin. Uh, the energy balance of the house isn't as important as the thermal comfort, they say. It just, let's see. Despite uh, mis, mis, myths and misconceptions about the fireplace, there is a rekindling of interest in the classic fire and the savings it can bring to the home wire. Oh, here we go. Delivering an estimated 5 kilowatts of radiant power. Oh, if you use a grate, uh, so this is great. I mean, uh, we didn't, I didn't really learn if it, uh, how many, how much wood it would take, but it seems like, uh, fireplaces work. Uh, otherwise, why, I guess their point was like, why would anybody use it? We've talked, it's been a while since we talked about the many face God. So let me just run through a little bit of it, uh, is worshipped by uh, the faceless people in the free city of Bravos. Uh, they believe it's the one God, uh, but it's a syncretic religion. Its followers uh, believe that everyone worships the same God, uh, just under different names. Uh, uh, faceless people believe that these gods are just different aspects or faces of the same God, uh, the many-faced God. The Temple of uh, the Faceless People in Bravos is known as the House of Black and White, and it contains a large public sanctuary with statues of the gods. Uh, you got the Stranger, uh, Weirwood Tree Face, uh, a Drowned God, made of driftwood, uh, Lord of Light, a Fiery Heart, uh, Black Goat of Quar, the Weeping Woman of Lease, and the Lion of the Nights. Uh, there's also other honor, uh, the Hooded Wayfarer, the Pale Child, the Moon Pale Maiden, and the Merlin King. Uh, just a little bit about it. I don't know. I just want to look that up because, uh, uh, I don't know. Then there's a movie. I haven't caught this movie yet, San and Ollie, even though it does uh, star uh, John C. Riley and Steve Coogan, both who I love. Uh, came out at the end of last year. Uh, it shows them, uh, uh, they're, they're, it's about their personal relationship while they were going on a music hall tour of the United States and the UK in Ireland in 1953 and struggling to get another movie made. Uh, and it kind of talks about how Stan and Ollie are kind of uh, dealing with contract negotiations in different ways. And uh, let's see, I don't want to give anything about the movie away. Um, it was announced in 2016, written by Jeff Pope, uh, who co- collaborated, uh, uh, with Steve Coogan and, uh, Philomena, uh, film, uh, to filming took place in 2017 in the West Midlands, Birmingham, Bristol, uh, Riley had to get a, you know, a lot of, uh, there was a lot of, uh, you know, makeup work and stuff. It's got a 93% and, uh, and a 7.49 on Rotten Tomatoes. And it looks like John C. Riley won. They got nominated for a bunch of awards. Uh, uh, Boston Society of Film Critics, uh, John C. Riley uh, won that. Uh, and the San Diego Film Critics Society Awards. So, I don't know, just a movie I'm looking forward to seeing. Uh, why did I think of it? I can't remember now. Probably something to do with one of the many duos in this episode. 
oh, when we're, now we're back together or whatever. I don't know. One thing that comes up with these military things is flank and flanking. And no matter how many times I try to read about it, I never understand it. So I thought I'd look it up yet again. In military tactics, a flanking maneuver is a movement of armed forces around a flank. Oh, great. I got to learn what a flank is again. To achieve an uh, advantageous position over an enemy. Yeah, I, I, thought, I can't remember if it's the side or the back. Uh, it's useful because uh, the force's uh, offensive powers head towards the front, uh, and then they uh, circumvent the front of the force. Uh, uh, it can be operational or strategic. Uh, it's a basic tactic. Uh, flanking means uh, going from one or two sides at an angle uh, to the enemy's direction of engagement. Um, it could be a surprise or it could be planned. Uh, and uh, a part of them, they come, uh, the part of it suppresses, uh, then another part uh, meets the flank, uh, advances, closes in, and it has to be coordinated. Uh, m- most effective is a double envelopment, uh, which involves uh, simultaneous uh, flank moves on both sides. Uh, flanking was achieved, uh, usually achieved by cavalry uh, due to their speed and maneuverability, while more the infantry could be used to fix them, uh, you know, up front. Uh, uh, defense against, uh, since it's constantly happening, you could use terrain. Uh, this is kind of what Brian's talking about. A commander could be prevent being flanked by anchoring one or more parts of the line and terrain impassable, such as gorges, lakes, mountains, or while, although not strictly impassable, woods, rivers, uh, it could be used to anchor a flank. Uh, a fortification formations, uh, when terrain is in favor on, uh, uh, as long as they have a place, it was the role of the cavalry to be fl- placed on the flanks, uh, with speed and greater tactical flexibility, they could both make and guard again to guard the flank. So it's just a little bit about. I mean, I feel like I okay the side coming out on the sides. I guess that's what it is. Here's another thing that's always confused me. This is from the Grammarly blog. Who versus whom? Uh, uh, whom should be reused to refer to the object of a verb or proposition? Preposition. Uh, when in doubt, try this simple trick. If you can pro- replace a word with he or she, uh, if you can replace it, use who. What about they, he, she, or they? If you could replace it with him or her or them, him or them, is that correct? Or use whom? I'm sorry, I'm rewriting this. Who should be used to refer to the subject of a sentence? Whom should be used to refer to the object of a verb? Okay, so if you're like most things, you realize there's a difference between these pronouns. I mean, not me. You are, or, or you aren't sure. After the reading this article, you should know. Okay, so when to use who? Let's take a look at a couple of examples. Who is the subject? Who would like to go on vacation? Okay, that's correct. Uh, who made these awesome quesadillas? That's correct. Whom is the object of a verb or preposition? To whom is this letter addressed? Uh, whom do you believe? How can you tell when your pronoun is the object of a verb or proposition? Oh, try the replacing it. Uh, so I guess I'm even more confused than before, but it's also because I'm like reading for a podcast. Uh, so I don't know if that cleared anything up. Let's go over to the um. Let's go over to Pottermore. What do you say and read about the night bus? Uh, this is by J.K. Rowling over at Pottermore.com. Uh, uh, for witches and wizards who are flu-sick, uh, whose apparition is unreliable or who don't like heights or uh, don't like uh, taking port keys, there's always the night bus, which appears whenever a witch or wizard is in urgent need of transportation. They stick out their wand arm at the curb. It's a purple, purple triple-decker bus. It has seats during the day and beds at night. Not particularly comfortable. Don't drink hot drinks because a bus jumps from one thing. You know, it could spill your drink. It's a relatively modern invention in wizarding society. Takes ideas from muggles. 
Uh, there was a need of some sort of tr transportation that could be used safely and discreetly by underage or infirm wizards. Uh, and uh, uh, it was uh, Dougal, du Dugald McPhail, who uh, came, uh, who said in 1865, let's make a bus like the Muggles have. And uh, some wizards, uh, you know, they said it was too muggle like uh, Daily Prophet had much of it. J.K. Rowling says uh, it was named because uh, night is a homonym of a night. Uh, there are night buses running over all over Britain and normal transport stops. Uh, secondly, night, K-N-I-G-H-T, has a connotation of coming to the rescue of protection, and this seemed more appropriate as a conveyance of last resort. Uh, and the driver and conductor of the night bus in Azkaban are named after my two grandfathers, Ernst and Stanley. So this is just a little bit about night bus because there's so much about night in this thing. Um, let's see. I was going to try to look up, like, what room they could have been in Winterfell. I don't know if I'll be able to figure that out. Let's see if this will load. I said, well, how many rooms are in the Winterfell castle, and where was this... Uh, where were they hanging? Where was everybody hanging when they were doing their uh, chillaxing storytelling? So this is a back to uh, awoiaf.com, uh, the layout. It's a huge castle, several acres, two massive walls, village outside the winter town. It was built around an ancient god's wood over natural hot springs, water piped through the walls to heat them making it more comfortable than other castles. The uh, castle has dozens of courtyards and small open spaces and training yards. Uh, the inner ward is the second much uh, older open space in the castle. Uh, inside Winterfell stands the inner castle, which contains the Great Keep and the Great Hall. Uh, the Great Keep is the innermost castle stronghold built over the natural hot springs, composed of granite, uh, connected to the armory by a covered bridge. Uh, from a window on the covered bridge, you can see the entire yard. Great halls used for receiving guests. I mean, that's one of the other meetings. Uh, raised platform. There's a small sept. Uh, Edward was built for uh, Caitlin. Uh, the round tower is the first keep, uh, the oldest part of the castle, but no longer in use. Uh, then there's the broken tower, which was once the tallest tower. I remember this from the first book. Uh, a lot of this is from the book. Uh, so, yeah, I don't know. Then there's the downstairs, the bell tower, uh, library tower, maester's turret below the rookery, and the guard's owl tower. And Wintertown's the town outside that I saw out there that I was like, hey, is that the pub? Real quick, I, we probably have looked up Tarth before, but it's been a while. So I said, where is Tarth? You know, where's Brian from? Uh, Tarth is also called the Sapphire Isle. It's an island in the narrow sea on the east coast of Westeros. Uh, Straits of Tarth, uh, northeast of Shipbreaker, Bra Ship Baker Bra Ship Breaker Bay. It's uh, considered a part of the Stormlands. Uh, uh, it falls under House Tarth, uh, and they're sworn to Storm's End. Uh, it's said to be beautiful, lakes, waterfalls, soaring mountains, high meadows, shadowed vales, a striking blue sea on which it sits, uh, got a hidden valley, a spine of mountains, uh, so I, I don't know, I just wanted to look it up and give it a little thing, um, and then finally to end it with the kind of, uh, the Khaleesi saying, who's that girl, or who's that statue, uh, and that reminded me of a song by Madonna from the soundtrack of her 87 film, Who's That Girl? It was released in June of 1987. Uh, it was the first single. It was also on the greatest hits albums, the greatest hits album, Celebration. Uh, Madonna requested Patrick Leonard to uh, do an up-tempo song, capture the nature of her film persona. Uh, let's see. The music video portrayed a different persona over Madonna. Rather than her film character, uh, let's see who's. Uh, it's a classic. I, I can't sing it. Critical response: uh, explained that the song was Madonna's best take on her original musical style. Um, so that's a, a link to that Wikipedia article. Then there's one about the film. Maybe I've seen the movie. I don't remember. Uh, 
the screwball American comedy directed by James Foley, written by Andrew Smith and Ken Finkelman, came out in 87. Madonna and Griffin Dunn, a story of a street smart, street smart, kind of like the uh, musical Chicago. I don't know. Is it a, maybe not. A, it it kind of like she's she's like searching for something and uh, he's searching for something. And it was originally called Sl- Slammer, uh, but they changed the name. Madonna had had, uh, I think it went, she had a hit movie, then a movie that didn't go so good. Uh, it looks like this one also did not do so good. Um, and, uh, but I mean, the album, I mean, the songs are timeless. So, I mean, I don't know how to, like, uh, how some, like, uh, they would feel about that. Uh, but I mean, you know, not everything can turn out perfectly. Uh, but you know, you know, what turns out perfectly is, uh, hearing from, uh, Tom and then Sir Pounce in a second here. Thanks. Well, hello, hello everyone. My name is, uh, Sir Tom and you may, 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 may know me as your grace, uh, your Lord, uh, my grace, uh, Sir Tom and Prince Tom and King Tom and first of, first of I, I believe I am first of my name, uh, but also as Mikey, the neighbor to Scooter, roommate of Ray and the Gregor, but most importantly, the name I carry with me, I could be last of my name if I still carried the title of best friend of one Sapounce. Uh, say hello, Sapounce. Yes, ma'am. That's right, Sapounce. I'm not sure what you said, but... Uh, uh, did you say ranch dressing? Because it, was, it has been a while since we've had some of that. You, also, Sapounce, you're not, allowed, you're not allowed to have any ranch. Also, oh, race said I'm not either. Uh, but but I'm a best friend of Sapounce, uh, the greatest cat who's ever lived, the greatest best friend who's ever been a best friend or a cat or any of those things. Uh, Sapounce, where did you learn to, to be such a good best friend? Yes, I mean, oh, me. Of course, it's partly me, it's partly you, it's partly the connection we have and the times we've shared. And in, in, in speaking of which, it's time for our radio show, uh, which we forgot to do a setup for because of the podman uh, said, Tom, it's time to do your show. And then he, you know, it treated me like I'm supposed to do everything. So podman, get in here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, French beyond the binary. Here at uh, K Pounce, it's time for the uh, newest radio show and I'll uh, uh, s- s- Sunday evening lineup. It's a hard boiled detective and his hard boiled sidekick. And uh, we don't know the name of the show, uh, but, it, but, uh, it or, but, but it's time uh, for your afternoon radio. Uh, Tom and Pounce. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Something about a noir on K Pounce Radio, the radio best friends and cats and best friends everywhere. There, where I was uh, sitting with the Pounce, uh, waiting for our next case to see. And the two of us were sitting down when we heard a tune. Now, it's not strange for us to hear a tune because our office is in the back of uh, uh, Chardonnay, Chardonnay Noir's club underground, under the street level. I could hear the chugging of the subway trains. Chugging like a thousand dreams, chuggling along, riding on a train while they're dreaming, daydreaming. But it was night, and tonight was a fateful night. It was the night of Sir Pounce and I it took a case, a case about tone, atonement with the father. Uh, because uh, what had happened was uh, we got a call, my phone rang. And it went bring, bring, bring. A phone is a thing that doesn't exist anymore, really, for the most part. Uh, but Ray gave me a play school phone with a face, and it's very nice, and wheels. And then I found out not all phones have wheels, just my phone. And it makes a ring, ring, ring when I dial it up. But my phone made a ring, ring, ring. And I picked it up, and I said, Tom in here. It reached Tom and pounce. We're here. We're hard-boiled detectives, uh, cracking cases. Uh, what can we do you for? She? It's a bounce. Can you do that, too, when you talk? Yes, ma'am. Meow, meow. Meow. Pretty close, Sir Pounce. Maybe you should work. Mr. Pounce, you should watch me a little. 
Shay. Okay, Mr. Bounce. Ma'am. You're getting there. In the case, the case, uh, the person on the phone was a mysterious voice and asked me and uh, uh, Tom to head to the side of town that we happen to be in, a side of town more adventurous than the vanilla sides of town, where normally the, the mother would want me to be all, at all times. Uh, the side of the town with the neon lights and the alleyways, uh, garbage outside, which, uh, you know, I, normally in my previous life I wouldn't have had to even see. See, I told, I said, please get that garbage out of my view. What is that? I, I am not to smell these things. But then I remembered I was tough, Shay, and I uh, went down the alley. We, we, Sir Pounce and I. Sir Pounce walked ahead, sniffing the air. Uh, you know, and I was becoming more adjusted to these things, too. Even the alleyway was, uh, you know, mucky, and we walked further down. This alleyway was uh, known uh, to be S E E D E D Y. We went in, and then we went in deeper into the alleys where people would go in such a things. And first of, uh, in this case, uh, a, a parlor of games, King Fun Times, a super happy fun parlor of games. And we went there, and uh, we, a young person looked up at me and said, "What do you want? Uh, you here for to play some games? Uh, you need some tokens?" And I said, uh, we received a call, uh, and then I noticed uh, in the back there was an office, and uh, the king of games uh, missed a super happy fun time, so he was sitting back there. He didn't either look happy, nor super, nor fun, and he made me a motion with his, and, and, and then the, the young person at the door said, there's no, and I said, excuse us. We'll be walking in. But Sir Pounce had already walked in, ignoring the young person who was going to say there's no cats allowed. We headed back to the room. We went into the back office of the Super Happy Fun Time Games Parlor. But on the way, I found this game called Fascination. And then I was distracted, and a few hours went by playing it. You take these rubber balls, you roll them gently. And there's a mirror, and you're trying to get them all lined up in a row. And if you do, you win. But you, it says you win a prize. And there's these giant stuffed animals. I thought it would be fun for Sabounce to sleep on the belly of one, a giant uh, 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 elephant. And uh, But then when, when I did finally win, they said, oh, yes, you win a small prize. If, if you win again, you could upgrade it to a, a smaller uh, medium prize, then a medium prize, then a medium medium prize than medium law. So I played for some time. I did not win. I won a, a pencil holder. So one day that'll be useful. And then I went to the office. Sir Pounce was waiting, bathed and napping. As was the king of the super happy fun, you know, king super happy fun times or whatever he called himself. He looked familiar to me. I woke him up and I remembered Waking someone else up, uh, sleeping uh, during the day, uh, hard to get them to wake back. I said, wake up, I'm here to crack your case. So the bouncer started to stretch and awoke. Uh, and it took, and then finally the, the king of super happy first said, blah, 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 blah. Uh, sorry, sorry. And uh, I said, did you call us in for a case? He said, I did. He said, I called you in for an apology, actually. And I said, what do you mean exactly? And he said, all of this is yours. Uh, this whole super happy fun time parlor is yours. Uh, I, uh, yeah, I've been keeping it for you and I want to give it to you. And I said, uh, looks, uh, the fascination's pretty great. Well, how come you have the games are, uh, uh, so bounce, what would you call that? Yeah, rip off. Is it your games are a rip off? And you have, uh, you, you, this place needs to be swept up and I don't, you seem to be mismanaging it. If you, if I'm honest with you, if I'm, I'm, if this is the case, I'm going to tell you the truth. And he apologized again profusely telling me that this was my, his legacy to give to me. 
And I started to remember things. And, you know, because I've, uh, you know, I, I do have learned things uh, from uh, the Podman and Ray and Mikey and Mr. Pounce and the Gregor. So I started to uh, massage uh, with one thumb. I massage uh, the uh, fleshy part of my uh, hand on my other hand between my thumb and my finger. And it helps me uh, accept what I'm feeling. And many complicated feelings were flowing through me. For I knew who this man was. I knew what this case really was about. It, it was about that, it, that uh, there's video games you could play in your house now. And I told him that. And they said, I'm sorry. This is a place for super happy fun times in the past. Uh, and I think you need to rethink your business model. And also, again... If you're going to stay in business, you have to... Also, I'm here. I'm here with Sir Pounce. Uh, we work in the back of Chardonnay Noir's. Uh, and then I realized, oh, no, this is a different decade. People don't have video games. And so I said, he can't see the future. And I noticed, you know, he, he, he stunk of rye. And I said, okay. I said, listen, man. Uh, there's something... You you, you 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 trying too hard to keep up super happy fun times, uh, and uh, you know not all the times. So, you know that's why I have a best friend for the times that you know you, you everyone has a best friend in good times, right? So pounce, but it's when I'm curled up in my bed, uh, and so pounce hops on there and plucks at my bed, and then I'm in the fetal position. And Sir Pounce gets within the fetal position, within my fetal position. That's when you need a best friend. And sometimes you're talking to a man who represents something. And he said, what, what are you going? And I said, okay, it's tone time. I've learned about this. Uh, and I started to sing to him because I said, it's time I had read in, when the pod man read me about tone, tone, tonements with fathers. And so I sang him a song of the future of arcades and video games and and uh, also of, of a full spectrum. It was a very good song I sang. So Pounce even sang along and we did something like you'd see in the cartoons with the two cats uh, going around. And uh, he realized uh, he had fallen back asleep. And I said, well, okay, well, I've toned you. Now I need to move on to, to my next case. I can't stay here bogged down in what you want for me. Or you holding on to the super happy fun times that neither... I said, I'm moving. I'm going back to uh, Chardonnay Noir's office, the cabaret club, uh, to work on uh, my, you know, to do my thing. Good day. And Sir Pounce and I walked, but, well, first I played Fascination. And then, uh, uh, like, I, I, I was really in the zone, I think, because I had released some things and because of my singing. Also, it was only, uh, there was only two other players. And uh, they were required to, uh, uh, and also I borrowed, because the other players were Ray, the Podman, and Mikey. I mean, uh, the Gregor. And they said, don't be, win. I'm here to, this is for Sabounce, not for me. So now I have back at uh, Chardonnay Noir's office a giant a plush, they called him, a plush elephant, and Sir Pounce is sleeping on it now on the belly of an elephant, sleeping so soundly. Another case closed, another chapter that I can move on from. Uh, good day. Uh, it's time for my prayers to old gods and the new uh, crone, sweet, sweet crone, Miller, Smith, Barky, Jester, Hound Dog God. It's a scoots here, prayer in on the, on the old, you know, I think I made this joke back when the song, you know, on the prayer phone. Crone, it, maybe I didn't, because crone rhymes with prayer phone, uh, which actually I think just calls out. It, usually it's a smoke phone on my end, or, the, you know, the old clumsomatic, clums, uh, because I was going to see if you need to reach me, crone, call me on the prayer phone. But uh, I guess it's kind of like a pager. I send out a page to you. And eventually, maybe, I'm just kidding, gods. Oh, gods, I'm here. Humble in my servitude. And actually, that's really why I'm calling in. 
is to, to work on this mission here of continuing our relationship. Uh, this is a new thing, and I, I may not be, the, I may, I mean, more than likely I am the only human being. Okay, God, how do I break this to you? Okay, I may, I may be the only human grappling with this in this particular manner, but I'm sure other people may be dealing with this. Is uh, what, what, like, because a lot of people, let's see, how do I say this, uh, in a more, uh, you know, some people change their, their belief systems. They think, you know, it, it, depending on the stages of their life, seasons of their lives, you know, like prayers through an hour, hour, hourglass, uh, so, uh, but if, if this is, a, I don't know how to breach this. Maybe we've breached it before. Uh, I feel like we know we one another well enough. Uh, also, Crone, you're supposed to be all seeing and all knowing. Oh, I didn't introduce you. Well, I guess I did. It was the last episode. Uh, um, okay, well, there's two issues here. This is why I needed, you know, I should, I've already blown through one week. This is week two. Of them. I'm going to use up at just uh, breaching the subject. So I'm really going to have to buckle down. You know, I do, like, uh, I have to work, find a way. You're right, totems. So some part of my brain just shouted it out. Uh, I can't say. Uh, I think those go against a lot of the rules in, in, in other belief systems, but we'll come back to that. Oh, just in the image. Okay, thank you. Sorry, guys. I got, you know, believe it or not, you have your panel P. I I got mine up in my brain. Uh, a variety of personalities, and they all think they're gods, uh, believe me. Anyway, Crone, sweet, sweet Crone, Miller, Smith, Bark, a Jester. There's two issues at hand. In the, I mean, the real question subtextually is how how may i serve thee how may i and i'm not kidding you might be snickering uh, but here's the situation parents parents went away on a week's it, like uh grown went away on a week's vacation maiden wouldn't you know maiden wouldn't get back to my prayer texts uh, or prayer whatever it's called uh what is that thing called pager okay guys here's the thing we're parting ways where we have these official meetings uh in a few weeks and I don't want to like kind of, uh, you know, break any illusions. Uh, some of it's based on my own belief systems too, but I guess I never double checked, uh, that you didn't know you were on a fictional TV show. Also, I don't think not, not all of you knew that you were fictionalized from a fictional TV show. That's like a, you know, it's a nesting doll within a nesting doll. But before you know, before you overreact, uh, first leave George R. R. Weiss and Benny off out of it. Uh, they get enough on their plate. Uh, you know, hopefully they're. Wor- I think they're all working on cool stuff. So let's keep them out of it, especially R. R. Because I don't need like uh, the last thing I want to picture is him chilling. You know, maybe he just doffed his cap to a friend. And then, you know, and he's sitting there thinking about the Jets, uh, saying J-E-T, you know, this year, 19, season 1920 is our year. I get to focus on all the games because I don't got to worry about it, you know. And then someone says, George, uh, I haven't seen you in ages. So, well, sit down. Uh, hey, did you, have you ever heard of that Sleep With Me pot? No, never heard of it. Uh, you know, I sleep great. Uh, well, there's a, a couple episodes where they, he, he created his own. Okay, so God's like, uh, here's the thing. I believe that, that there is spiritual energy and that possibly this is possible. Because a lot of people say, well, how can you believe, like, how come you don't believe the same thing I don't believe? You know, that can happen. I'm sure it's happened in your experiences, especially those of you that are new to this God thing, like, uh, Miller Smith, uh, Bar- oh, all everybody but the crone. Well, Barky, you're real, you're you're the oldest of the old gods, uh, but you're also kind of like the Aspen, you know. I think uh, you're, you're whatever you know, multi-related, or I don't know how to describe it. Uh, but so the spiritual energy, I believe, cre- cre- you know what I mean, gods. I think you know. So it's a, uh, so I don't know whose fault. I really don't know who to point the finger at to start with, with this bad news I'm giving you. And I don't want to, so I guess I'm pointing it at not, uh, I'm saying let's not point fingers. Let's fix things. 
So there's two possibilities. And hopefully this isn't news to you because you, you should, you know, you should be, you know. But I guess if you're a god, you might have other stuff in your mind. Uh, clearly, Maiden, you got other people on your mind other than me, which is fine. I'm sure it's this, the warriors uh, or, the, you know, maybe the smith. Uh, believe me, you know, it's fluid, Maiden. I've had the smith on my mind, too, and the miller. You know, picturing that grinding your grains. Uh, anyway, uh, so... Where was I? So if I've brought, but somehow helped, my belief systems have somehow given you an extra energy and brought you in further into existence. Uh, like maybe, let's not go down that. But God's real reason I'm here is to say, how am I going to, how are we going to keep in touch? And well, here's a random, what if we have a summer camp uh, every summer? I think this is it, God. So I was saying well, let's talk to the gods. They'll help you figure it out. That's why they call it divine inspiration. You know, if the channel, if the, the communications channel's not open, you know, the energy can't flow. And every time I doubt that gods, then boom, next thing you know, you're here. I guess this will work out for the next five weeks or four weeks. Whatever we have together is uh, we'll, we'll plan a summer camp. Then we'll know every year from here. I mean, I don't know, Cron, what, what do you got in store? What's cooking up what, coming down the road? Maybe even in the two or three planes of existence, not just this plane. Maybe this is a summer camp that exists in all realms. You know, it could all all the way go all the way back uh, and all the way forward. That, that could be pretty sweet. Uh, oh, what's a summer camp? A great, great question, whoever asked that. Uh, like... Uh, well, you know, also Maiden, it has never happened. I only went to summer camp once because it didn't go good, and it was only for a week. Uh, but when I found out how much it cost, I can't, I can't believe I, I didn't, like, the one summer camp I went to was a great deal. Uh, but so, and also things, also I went to computer camp. That wasn't sleepover, but that didn't go good either. So most of my experiences with camps uh, haven't been great because uh, I went to summer camp. That was a... Uh, Overall, a good experience uh, with its ups and downs. Computer camp, I, was, I don't think I was, I was asked to leave computer camp uh, uh, for being outside in front of class. Uh, I'll just get to go ahead and giggle, gods. It's fine. I've talked about it before. Uh, so, uh, so those were the camps I've been to. So maybe I don't think I'm going to be a camp counselor. What I was saying, Maiden, though, is at least in the movies, that's the time. Uh, when Pete, you know, like, uh, anyway, maybe not. Okay, I'll just plan it with the gods I'm normally in touch with. Uh, so, gods, let me know this week what you think about us starting a summer camp. Uh, we'll plan it out. Then we'll have it scheduled every, because we, because the thing is, uh, that's why I said don't worry about this fictional stuff, because it, it, we're, the whole purpose of me praying in right now is to plan for the future and also because I accept my humanity sometimes. Uh, I judge my humanity, but it, like I say, well, Scoots, you're not so good at keeping in touch with the gods unless it's on a schedule. And I don't think I can handle one of those schedules uh, like uh, every Sunday. That's, you know, every Saturday. That's holy. Uh, so this would be good, gods. It's the kind of thing. Here's another, another piece of good news. Uh, when it's these occasional things, uh, the glaze of nostalgia goes over it. So you look forward to it, even if it, like, I would still go back to summer camp, but even though computer camp, they wouldn't, they won't let me back there probably. Uh, but summer camp, they probably wouldn't either if I could travel back in time anyway. But, uh, you know what I mean? God, you forget that you didn't like it. You say, well, man, I can't wait to get back there. Not that I don't. Every moment with you, crone, sweet, sweet crone. And this will be good. This will give us some structure. We'll start building the anticipation. We'll think of activities for roles for all of you. And we can even call it a spiritual summer camp. Uh, I, I know not everybody likes that word, but we are talking to the old gods and the new. So that's good, gods. Thank you for your inspiration, because I wouldn't have been able to think of that on my own. Which is kind of amazing, because even though I'm talking here in a calm voice, I'm kind of, my mind's kind of blown. Because they said, well, 
we really got to sit down and figure this out. We've got only got a couple of weeks with left with the guy. Now, this doesn't mean you'll be on the podcast, guys. I can't guarantee that part, uh, but maybe we'll work it out. Uh, also, this I can't believe I never thought of it. Barky, you know, I did put, put those Good Place episodes out for you. And I'm not sure if you got them or the other computers that I got. It was refurbished. Uh, and it wrapped it in shrink wrap, and it's not there anymore. But I got a feeling you're not using it. Uh, because, it, like, uh, when I looked up where it was, uh, you know, it was in Southwest, like, uh, somewhere. And I said, well, is that really where Barky is? I, that looks like uh, like there's no trees. To... But, hey, guys, you may check out The Good Place. I think you'll like that show, too. But here we go. That's what we got going, guys. Next few weeks, uh, spending time together, building something, building a future. You know that we only have. You know that the best part of the year. You know, swimming, fishing, canoeing, uh, dancing. So, do crone, sweet sweet crone, Miller Smith, Barky Jester, Hound Dog God. You know, never fret. Uh, I'm here, your humble servant. You know, he, he, they, 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 I have, I've never gotten the award Humanist of Humans, gods, but I would be in the running. It's so valuable am I that you already know it. Uh, you know, you, you, you know, I sell, I sell it because you dealt it or whatever, God said. Uh, so thank you for guiding me. Thank you for this inspiration. I'm looking forward to this now, gods. I was worried, really. Yeah. Uh, you are a bit like our, our friend Melissa. She sent us a video from Lionel Kitty City. Gods, you turn frown upside down, just like Lionel's kid. So God's old and new, oldest of the old gods and newest of the new gods. Uh, we got the crone. She's a good, crone's a new god and not newest of the new gods, but a new god, I think. Miller Smith are gods uh, that... Uh, are in my top drawer gods in my book, but the new gods, like the father, the mother, and the warrior, uh, they, you know, they said, well, those are more employee gods. Uh, they're words I heard, not mine. Uh, Jester, you're the new, Jester and Hound Dog God, you're the newest, you know, newer, newer gods. Uh, Ian Barkey, oldest of the old gods, a tree, you know, older than tree beard and wiser. But with spring in your step, no offense to tree beard. Uh, but I just picture you like like a little bit more spry. All right, guys, I'll talk to you soon. I'll I'll be working on uh, this uh, this whole holy summer camp, guys. Uh, I'll talk to you soon. Uh, rest and good night. Right, I want to say thanks, thanks, and good night to everybody who supported the show on Patreon recently. Uh, Sophia, Carrie, and Carly, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night, Colin. Danielle and Kaya, thanks, thanks, and good night. Emma, Alex, and Marna, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Rory, Bryce, and Christopher, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Sarah, Chad, and Sarah with an H, and, and one Sarah with no H, uh, thanks, thanks, and good night. Leah, Amanda, and Jennifer, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Alexandra, Craig, and Katie, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Kevin, uh, Barrett and Shannon, thanks, thanks, and good night. Ann, Jimmy Chu, and Ellen, thanks, thanks, and good night. You think that's the shoes? Uh, Scott, Nylon, and Jeff, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Mark, Hedgehog, and Natty, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Alana, Pepper, and Andrew, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Christy, Justina, and Nady, thanks, thanks, and good night. Aaron, Joseph, and Jennifer, thanks, thanks, and good night. Carrie, Eric, and Paula, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sequoia, Marie, and Sonia, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Sleepy Mark, Michael, and Tara, thanks, thanks, and good night. Lauren, Kyle, and Matthew, thanks, thanks, and good night. Tara, Zoe, and Heidi, thanks, thanks, and good night. Zachary, M, and Holly, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Roger Topher and Iron, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Jody, Katie, and Lindsay, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Kaylee, Caitlin, and Jose, thank you, thanks, thanks, and good night. KD, uh, Katie, 
and Danny, thanks, thanks, and good night. And Rebecca, Paul, and David, thanks, thanks, and good night. Uh, Sleep with Me exists because of direct listener support, like those people I just listed that support the show on Patreon. And people that support the sponsors over at Sleep with Me Podcast.com slash sponsors. And we're a proud member of Night Vale Presents. You can check out all the amazing podcasts at nightvalepresents.com, including a great one about empathy, about compassion, about curiosity, and learning more, hosted by Dylan Marin. Uh, the sleepy title is Conversations with People Who Strongly Dislike Me. And you can check it out uh, here at Night Vale Presents. Uh, yeah, go to nightvalepresents.com, then you can yeah, click through and, and subscribe. Uh, we're also a member of PRX. You can see everything we're doing, everything they're doing, and we're doing at prx.org. And that's it. There's plenty of other uh, shows in the feed ready to go for you. Thanks. Thanks and good night.